before the video starts, I wanted to say if you enjoyed any part of this video, like and subscribe. I only post about once every month, so if I do post, I have a reason for it. So it's gonna be good. Do it, or he gets it. The concept of a redstone clock is simple. You get a redstone signal and you loop it around infinitely. If you even know what redstone does, you probably know what a redstone clock is. Many of these clocks are very small and simple, and they do the job pretty well. But what if I asked you, what is the fastest redstone clock that you know of? You'd probably build something like this, a simple two-repeater clock. And I mean, yeah, that shoots arrows pretty quickly, but it's not as fast as it gets. If you are a little bit into redstone, you might know that one redstone tick is a tenth of a second. You see, this repeater has a delay, and that delay is one-tenth of a second, because that is how fast a redstone tick is. But this is not the shortest delay in the game. Many of you may know about the game tick. This is a chorus fruit. You can stack many chorus fruits on top of each other, but if you break the bottom chorus fruit, all of the top chorus fruits will break in succession. However, the chorus fruits don't just instantly disappear. Instead, they disappear in a chain reaction that's exactly 1 20th of a second after each other. That 1 20th of a second delay, that's the game tick. Pretty much everything in the game revolves around game tick. Things like redstone ticks, spawn rates, random ticks, all that fun stuff that controls the game, that's run by game ticks. Because of this concept of the game tick, the fastest redstone clock for most people was known as this 20 hertz clock. The redstone output from this clock activates that node block 20 times a second. And for most people, that's it. This is the fastest redstone clock. I mean, how could it be any faster? The game runs on 20 hertz, so how could a clock be faster than 20 hertz? A few versions ago, there was a glitch where if you moved a piston really fast next to a cactus, it would grow the cactus. Now, this no longer works in the current version of Minecraft, but because of this, people started making insanely fast clocks to try to grow the cactus as fast as possible. One day I felt like making a cactus farm myself, so I followed a tutorial. So one day I was making this clock, and I accidentally built it wrong. I accidentally forgot about the middle bit, and I made the two parts too close to each other. But to my surprise, it still worked. Now I just took this as some weird glitch, and I moved on, and I didn't really think much of it. But as I was trying to create the fastest redstone clocks in the game, I came across a video by Pi31415926535897878. Why is his name so long? In his video, he showcased a machine that was basically just a combination of several of these clocks. Now this clock was basically the clock that I accidentally made, but instead of using redstone torches, it used a redstone block. However, he noticed something that I didn't. When he hooked up this redstone signal to a note block, he discovered something strange. If you look very closely, every single time a note appears, there's another note right next to it. Every time it activated, it actually activated twice. Looking closer at the clock, you can see exactly why this is. This redstone block is being pushed from here to here to back here instantly. And so I realized, if I could move the redstone block more than two blocks, I could make an even faster clock. So thus, I created the 40 hertz clock. The 40 hertz clock was so fast that pistons were completely useless on it. The only thing that you could hook it up to is a note block and a door, because otherwise it's completely pointless. And even after I did that, I wasn't satisfying. So I made the 80 hertz clock. And I realized, for as long as I could move the redstone block multiple places within a tick, I could get that many signals out of that redstone block. There is a YouTuber named One Tick Pulse. In one of his videos, he created an instant block transportation system. Essentially, what this would do is that it would take a block from point A to point B instantly within a game tick. It's very complicated and very massive, but I realized, what if I moved a redstone block? And so this is what I head out to build. So after months of work, I created the redstone clock. No, not that one, this one. This redstone clock's pretty simple. You got an instant repeater there, you got a zero tick generator there, you got that thing there, you got a triple piston extender down there, you got a, you got a the T flip flop there, and also this thing. If you had no idea what I was talking about, you're a sane person, don't change. All this machine does is it transports that redstone block all the way over here, instantly, and then it pushes this redstone line to here, so that this redstone block can be transported over there instantly, 
and then it repeats. And you can make this section as long as you want to. Just keep copy pasting it. You can build it out several ten thousands of blocks wide. At the bottom here, you got all these obsidian legs, or I don't know, staircases. From here, you can take out the signal from each individual section of the machine so that you could actually use it and put it into a note block or a door or whatever. Why would you do that? I don't know. I, I really don't know. But if you thought this was the fastest clock, you're wrong. And if you thought I didn't make a faster clock, you're also wrong. The problem with this machine is that if you wanted to transport the redstone block just one block, it takes like 40 block events. In other words, it's just not compact enough. And this is a problem because there's a limit to how many things can happen in the game. That limit is roughly 1.3 million things per second, and that, that sounds like a lot, but we want to optimize it as much as possible. I mean, if you wanted to make this in survival, all you'd need is 139 million slime balls, 168 million redstone dust, 21 million iron, 83 million cobblestone, 63 million wood, 70 million glass, and 29 years of smelting things on a single furnace. And on top of this, if you did make this machine to its full size, you couldn't put any other pistons anywhere in the world, otherwise it would instantly break the machine. Although 1.3 million block events can happen every second, this clock uses up so many block events that you can only have 29,000 signals per second. Yeah, you heard me. Only 29,000. I know what you're thinking. Shut up, activate the machine. Okay, fine. Yeah, you can see a slight issue, and let me remind you, this is nowhere near the full extent of this machine. In my previous redstone clock videos, I've said that there's two uses for clocks that are very fast. The first one is to activate a note block. Well, that wouldn't really work here because the game would just break, so no activating the note block. But the second use is to keep zombies and other mobs away from your door. You see, when you open and close a door really fast, the zombie or the other mob doesn't really know what to do, and it just doesn't walk through it. And you know what? That works with this machine. You can stop a zombie from going through a door by moving it so fast. And the reason why is because your game crashes, so the zombie doesn't even get to coexist with the door. But even after this, after months of work, I knew this wasn't fast enough. I could go even faster. As I mentioned, the more compact the machine, the faster its ultimate form. And so I remembered something. And then I remembered a specific block. This block is very unique. It has very unique properties, and it's very useful. Most people don't realize it. And that block is... The carpet. It's the carpet. Carpets have many properties. For example, if you put a carpet on top of a block, it'll still retain the properties of the block below it. And now we go back to what we talked about at the beginning of the video. Chorus fruits. As I mentioned, when you break the bottom of a chorus fruit, it'll break all the ones on top of it at a game tick delay. This is true with sugarcane, cactus, and gravity blocks. And carpets do the same thing. You can stack carpets on top of each other, and if you break the bottom carpet, it breaks all the top carpets. But there's a slight difference. There's no delay. Using this property of the carpet, I would create a redstone clock so advanced, so incredible, that not even masters could undone. Now, of course, this isn't the full clock. Neither is this. You see, I realized I don't have to create one big machine that forces a signal through every position of the redstone block. Instead, I create a bunch of tiny machines that are slightly offset using carpets. When you break this tower of carpets, it'll activate all of these zero-tick clocks one by one, until you get to the top. Then this machine here will just break the second tower of carpets. You can make the carpet towers higher, and you can make more of them, and you can keep doing that until you have a maximum speed clock. These carpets and this instant repeater are only a one-time thing. You only need these tiny clocks here. Then, using instant repeaters, you can grab the signal from all of these redstone signals and put it into one thing. I don't know why you do that, but you can. The thing about this clock is that instead of needing 30 or 40 block events for one redstone signal, you only need three. In other words, instead of a 29,000 hertz clock, this is a 400,000 hertz clock. I know what you're thinking, activate it. Okay, fine, I'll activate it. I activate it. Here, you see it? You see it activated? It a 
Okay, for some reason this one just didn't want to activate, but it did work. They're all activating, and you can keep extending this for as much as you want. Now, if you're advanced into redstone, aka insane like me, you're probably asking, is this really a zero tick machine? And my answer to that is yes. If I put a note block here, you can see that it's actually activating. That means, in fact, both sides of this note block are being powered in succession really quickly instead of at the same time. You know this because if this note block is being powered and then it tries being powered again, it doesn't work. Now you're probably thinking, why aren't there two notes coming from the note block every single time? And the answer is, it's too fast for note blocks. The only thing that this is good for is doors. That's the only thing that there's, there's no use for it otherwise. Note blocks just do not work for this much. It's too fast. This machine is too fast. And of course, this machine causes considerably less lag, although it's not really gonna matter if you make the full-scale machine, but yeah, that, that's, a, that's something you can say. The world downloads for both of these worlds will be in the description, as well as the coordinates for where the machines are. So I've done it. A 400,000 hertz clock. It's actually more than that. That's actually an under-exaggeration. These are the smallest zero-tick clocks. There's nothing small you can make. I mean, yeah, this is a little bit messy. You could definitely clean this up a little bit, but the concept is there. So now what? I've made the fastest clock. There's no clock faster than this. The only object that's even useful with it are, are doors and trap doors. That's it. That's not, why, why would you want that? The only thing that's good for is putting it under people's bases, but at that point, you might as well stop the server. Because it'll do it anyways. It's apparent. My journey of redstone clocks is finally over. Okay, do it. Subscribe. Like and subscribe where he gets it. Puff Pufferfish gets it. Look at him. Look at him. He's so cute. He's, he's innocent. Okay, do it. This part of the video is only if you want to download the world for yourself. So it's going to prompt you with, uh, do you really want to download this world? It is a 1.16.2 world. For some reason, it saves as a 1.16.1 world. But just say you know what you're doing, um, or you can make a backup if you really want to. Then when you, when you enter, you're going to see this. Um, you're actually not going to see this. You're going to be at spawn. You're going to have to fly over to negative 210, 800, and something like that. It'll also be high in the sky. So just go to the coordinates. The coordinates will also be in the description below. One more thing, once you're done using the machine, if you want it to work a second time, uh, you're gonna have to put this piston back, because this piston will be like, over here, it'll be like, broken, so you're gonna have to move this over here, and also the triple piston extenders will also be broken, so you're gonna have to break, like, this whole row here, and then put three pistons, a wool, and then a redstone block here. You're gonna have to reset both of those things on both sides of the machine, and then you are good to go. Okay. One more thing, once you're done using this machine, you just place back the carpets and then replace these pistons here because they will be moving and you don't want them to be moving. Other than that, everything will be reset by itself and uh, you're good to go. See ya.